in our culture, in our society, that many of us don't even realize it. We don't even recognize it. And it takes a strong passage like Revelation to bring us back to center. I want to share this other passage. You know, I I work on my sermons, and and I write them a good deal ahead of time so that you know, we have parallel series with our kids so that what we're learning today, our children are learning as well in a kidified version. We have graphics and videos that must be made. So I, I try to write our sermons, uh, my sermons, months in advance. And, and then I get a week ahead and I start kind of walking through it and, and, and relearning and, and, and making sure that it's fresh bread and not kind of stale Krispy Kremes, which are no good either. And um, I want to make sure it's good and good and warm. And I was having a conversation with one of my closest friends who's a pastor. His name's Mark. He's a pastor at Movement Church up in Hilliard. Don't go there. Stay here. And, um, and he said, man, I ran across this verse. You got to check this out. And it led to this gigantic conversation. I want to read it to you. And it's, and it's Amos chapter 5. This is a real book of the Bible. Amos is a prophet. and He's also a farmer. And uh, it's funny how God seems to use farmers a lot. But uh, throughout scripture, he just really does. And, uh, and I don't normally, I would never normally preach out of like the message, that's a paraphrased version of scripture, but I do read a lot out of the message. I study and teach out of the ESV, but I read a lot out of the message. I just kind of try to read a lot uh, through scripture. And I want you to listen to this passage. This is God speaking to his people. Listen to these words. This is God now speaking to his people. He says this, I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with your conferences and your conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, your pretentious slogans and your goals. I'm so sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. I've had all I can take with your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? You know what I want? I want justice. Oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all I want. So I read through that passage this week, and it has just spurred on so many conversations. And the question has to be, have we changed the metric of success? I want, and I believe that you want, I believe collectively we want a church that moves in God's power. But if we want to be a church that moves in God's power, then we have to be a church that gauges success by holiness and not happiness. If we want to be a church that moves in power, and this is the second point here for you, we have to be a church that measures success by holiness. Holiness. 